really hope you're not thinking of breaking into there. I think your voice defaulted to normal. To like to uh that's uh his voice. Oh shit. You can just activate security for this place. I'm not gonna do it. Um I want to kind of diplomatize my way through, then come back and murk him. Uh, what do you want? But yeah, I think there might be, like, beyond the Wendigo thing, I think there might, uh, I remember someone saying that there is psychological conditions that make people feel compelled to do cannibalize um, or vampire hey you know I think there is psychological conditions that push people that way I wouldn't be surprised um, my mind goes back to a quote from burn notice great show again Fiona and most of the chicks in it are the weak point just they go for belligerent chick thinking it means strong strong woman, but there's a difference between strength and belligerence. It's also people go on strong female character as an idol to look up to, when it could mean she beats the shit out of everyone and is a complete belligerent asshole that's pro-genocide. Describing like two different characters in like Full Metal Alchemist. And with, with drop genocide, I'm just describing Fiona. Except that I'm forgetting. Then runs to a not tries to run to another country when anyone stands up to her. Um, but yeah, basically they confuse asshole with being strong, or like especially given that they kind of use strong in a role model sort of way, um, in a positive sort of way. They kind of over it, their. When they go on about strong female characters, they kind of talk about them in a role model sort of way. But that seems to override like the character's actual actions. Whatever they do, it doesn't matter. They're a strong female character, even though they're a belligerent asshole that's utterly contemptible. It's kind of a weird thing going on. But, um, like, domestic abuse is fine, strong female character. The copity is fine, strong female character. It's irritating. weird. But, ugh, people are strange. When you're a stranger. Uh, like I said before, Burn Notice is the Lost Boy sequels we never got. Michael! Mike! Um, but yeah, uh, Dr. Cox in it, uh, is in it for a little bit. Um, he isn't around too long. He is talking to the mom, who is actually overall fine. Uh, she's a bit annoying, a bit irritating, but she's on the better end, all, all in all. Um, compared to, say, Fiona, uh, who frequently assaults people, shoots Sam Axe, and the one time uh, Michael justifiably hits her, he's trying to keep cover because she's about to leave the actual killer and psychopath go. She, She's like, you son of a bitch. And the music goes dire, and he's like, so sorry. She never apologizes, and he's pleading, you son of a whore, or whatever. And it's just like, you frequently beat the shit out of everyone. You shoot people on your side, and he has a good reason, and you hate his guts. And later on, I can't watch you do this to yourself anymore, and goes to flee the country. Given her overreaction earlier, it just looks like she's fleeing because someone actually stood up to her. She's got a glass straw, which isn't how you're meant to read her, but the writers didn't know how to write her without making her unlikable completely. And a complete glass jaw. Again, they write from the idea of strong female character, and therefore and she does is fine. It doesn't matter. Strong female character. It's irritating. 
also defi they, people define strong female character as well written when so often it isn't and it defi also implies that if a female character is weak as some people are weak I wouldn't personally classify myself as a strong person you're not well written and given that they confuse strength with belligerence Yeah. Anyway, uh, Dr. Cox in it makes a comment talking about Michael and his brother. I can't remember his name. But basically, Michael and his brother came from a broken household. The father was abusive. I think he was often drunk. While the mother did very little to actually solve it. She's obviously culpable for that in some way. Um, the Obviously, there's sympathy, therefore, being in a shitty situation, but as a parent, she has a duty to her kid, to her ki kids, and she f did fail in that regard. Uh, but anyway, that's not what he said. What he made a point was that both her sons were broken. What, the non -Mi Not Michael, but the other guy was a compulsive gambler. Compulsive. He was constantly in trouble with one faction or another, like the mob, because he will take out loans, lose money, and then they'll be on his ass for money. Uh, at the time, I think he hooked up with a chick in Vegas, got, had, had a kid, and then they broke up, and he's there minding the kid at home with his mom. And I think still being a compulsive gambler. Um, many of those follow Michael around like a puppy. Michael, on the other side, was much more better put together. But he, as Dr. Cox put it, basically, when the brother, like, imagine they're both glass bottles. When the brother broke, he just broke into pieces. Michael broke into a glass shiv. Broke into a weapon. I can't remember where I was going with this, but that is a great... I, I always mentally go back to that scene. It's a great line. Like I said, it, the show's great. Some of the characters are pretty weak in it. They're generally tolerable, but there's moments that's great on you. They piss me off because they just keep going around in my head. You know, you'll see the old cartoons, someone's bonked their head, and there's stars going around them. It's like that, but with... But it's like my brain going through a blender. I've been looking for you. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I'm sure Evan King is pretty pissed right about now. I bet he has the entire town out looking for me. He's worse than my parents. I'm sorry, Ian, but your parents are dead. You think I don't know that? You think I don't know what I did? I know what you did. Vance told me everything. It's the awfully troubled, Dean. What did you do? I killed them! My own parents! It was the fucking hunger. That thing that's haunted me my entire life. You must think I'm some sort of monster. Okay, and I know us too. I know it hurts, but saying here isn't the answer. Fine. I give a fine. Say here and cry. I can help you. Probably loved his parents, but... Yeah, it's a different sort of loss. Maybe I can help you. Help? How can you help? There's something inside me, something completely messed up. I'm a mutant, a fucking freak. The only person I was ever able to talk to was my sister Lucy, and she's gone. No one gives a shit about me except Vance and the family. Can't you understand that? Let's go home, Ian. The room featured in nightmares has faced them. Read this letter, Ian. Lucy wrote it. I'll bet it'll change, uh, I bet it'll change your mind. She, she really misses being home, and she's asked about me and here a lot. I think I had it all wrong. I shouldn't have come here. I bet Lucy is feeling just as bad as me. 
Please, tell Vance I've made my decision. I'm going home to Arfu. I hope to see you there as well. I'm just gonna gather my stuff together and say my goodbyes, then I'll head on back. Alright. I don't think they're gonna take that too well. Do love in this game you can reverse pickpocket things into people. <laughs> Just go to sleep. But yeah, I can't remember where I was going with that, but ultimately that was the point I wanted to get to. Was the um I'm kinda scatterbrained right now. Um uh, just kind of fluid and all over the place. Um, or in a flood plane. Uh, was just people break in different ways. Oh yeah, I was just like, human psychology is a mess. <laughs> and, you know, like, a human's mind could break in any which way. No matter how ridiculous it may seem, I'm sure if you put enough pressure on a person in the right way, or even in a weird way, it'll break, correct? You know, it'll break in some other way, you know, unprecedented way. It's just the human mind for you. It's far too malleable. Even in ways you don't want it to be. Kind of like you try to press it down in one way and it sports out another way. And that was the point I was getting at with the glass bottles. That one broke and he was just a mess. Well, Michael broke and he's broken, but he's got a sharp point to him. He's got he's a glass sh You know, he, you break a glass bottle, it's a glass shiv kind of thing. The other guy just shattered. You think they'll be more concerned about um, me being in here? I'll kill them first, and then it won't matter. It kind of bugs me, like the morality system in this. It appears we have a lot to speak about. Somehow he already knows. I trust your talk with young Ian went well. Oh, he doesn't. I am quite interested in learning the results of your discussion. Did he come to a decision? Before I talk about Ian, there's still the matter of our food to discuss. As long as you maintain this level of civility, please proceed. Vampires can drink any kind of human blood, even from blood bags. Uh, it's two different medicines. Maybe it's different rate, uh, grades of it. Or if to go back, it's just phrase. Maybe it is just different phrasing. Um, they won't fight back. They'll fight back in pockets. They're very easily preyed on because the other guys fear. There's too many of them for them to fight off. Probably, they'll probably all die, but they'll probably take a lot of the family with them. If that explosion was better timed, they'd probably take a number of the family with. You know, it would, it would actually be a good. You know, weapon. Look that blood preserved. I wish I knew which was the higher grade. Look, the blood preserved in blood pack and blood packs can provide what you need. Curious. Many years ago, I survived by drinking from fresh blood packs I recovered from hospital ruins. The problem was that these blood packs were scarce. What do you propose? Arthur will sell you blood packs and you'll leave the town alone. 
Although I appreciate what you are trying to do, please realize that we have no money or goods to speak of. What little money Carl makes with his shop goes to buying weapons and ammunition to protect ourselves. I am very sorry. But perhaps you can make a better offer? Well, I hear you're a badass gang that takes shit from nobody. Maybe work on your tagline. Arfu donates blood packs in exchange you protect them. Agreed. Please, take this proposal to Arafu. Speak with them and then return to me with their decision. I thank you for showing me that your kind can be trusted after all. It is a lesson I will not forget. Now, what of young Ian? Tell me his decision. He's decided to... I'm not sure I should be the one telling you this. If you fear reprisal from the family regarding his decision, know that I would never hold it against you. And as for Ian having you speak in his place, I find his trust sufficient enough to accept what you say is truth. He's decided to leave family. It saddens me to lose one of my flock, but I believe everyone has to follow their own path. All I was attempting to do was guide him. Now it seems that responsibility has fallen upon you. I hope you will be more successful. Please, I want you to take this. Consider it as an apology to you for all the hardships you had to endure finding this place. I broke so many legs. Our time together has been rather educational. Oh, got a weapon. A blueprint. <sighs> These are all humans. They're not actually vampires. They don't have to heighten stats. But, I can see there, she's damaged from nothing. Um, but they are just all very mentally ill. I don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm Holly, Vance's wife. Mm, tell me about the family. My husband started this group not long ago. He was trying to save them from a life of hardship and ridicule. They come from all over the wasteland now to find us and become part of the family. Hmm. This is Moresti, the home of the family. It's the only safe place for these poor people. It was good to... Mm, for all what we said. You new here too? I don't think I've met you yet. The name's Alan. What did you want? Yeah, we have a family. Well, anyone that Vance takes in because of their special problems can be part of the family. Right now I call this place home. The only home that's ever let me stay with my... problems. Guess I'll... But yeah, I do think believe that there's conditions out there to make people think of, you know, vampire and. I finished my first round of studies, and Vance said that I was doing great. I think I'm finally beginning to get the hang of. You know, the vampiric shit. I knew you'd get the hang of. Good job, Alan. But I don't know too much about it. See you around, I guess. See you again. Oh, hey there. I thought I knew everyone in the family, but I don't recognize you. You must be one of Vance's new initiates. My name's Justin. I'm pretty new here myself. It's a great way to get back at those assholes out there who think we're losers. If it wasn't for Vance, I'd still be getting the crap beat out of me by those guards in Rivet City. Well, Vance told me that this place was called Moresti. It was named after some town way across the ocean in a place called Romania. Huh. I understand. Goodbye. I can... Uh... Well, 
motorcycle gas tank, pilot light, lawnmower blade, motorcycle handbrake. Yeah, I'll be right, people. I think the new guy is so darn cute. Never had someone so young before in this place. Don't even think of breaking into that. Well, well, I'm surprised you don't know me. I'm Brianna. I take care of the men around here. Well, unmarried ones, anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's the last place I ever expected to end up. I mean, look at this place. It's so dark and dingy. What this place needs is a lady's touch. But don't tell Vance I said that. How about just the coolest gang this side of the US? As long as we listen to Vance's rules and listen to his stuff, he lets us do pretty much whatever we want. Bye, sweetie. Had a bit more of a look at that Wendigo tank. Uh, they're pr there's apparently a very loose interpretation of it, and it's like, Fuego. Grand Canyon, baby. Oh, it's your lucky day. Yeah, I remember you. I'd What's hope up? so. Just I'll give water to a homeless guy. It's fine. I'll head up this way. Um, once I get outside, I can fast travel. Shotgun ammo. There he is, the hero of the day. It's that Evan Famu never bought our Arthur again, in a sense. I know. I talked to Ian, and he told me everything you did. I don't know how you did it, but goddamn, am I glad you walked up that ramp and lent us a hand. Thanks again, kid. Consider yourself welcome back here any time you're in this part of the wastes. A proposal for you from Vance, the family's leader. Interesting. It seems they wish to enter into some kind of agreement. I guess it's better than pointing my gun down that ramp all day and hiding inside at night. Let Vance know he's got a deal. We'll do it. I'll speak to the others. I'm sure they'll agree with me. Any help you can provide will be appreciated. I've been saving up stuff for emergencies, in case things with Arafu got tremendously bad. You're welcome to some of it if you like. Whiskey. Sorry. Come. Really didn't go that far, did you? You know, I don't care about you. Don't care about anything. I'm glad I was wrong about you. Welcome back. There are a few interesting places around here I've heard about. I don't know if they'll help you or not, but you're welcome to them. Thank you. Don't be a stranger. Don't mind, Braley. 
She's in La La Land again. Well, all I can do is... That's usually because Braley breaks everything, thinking she's making a cake or something. Oof. That's rough. Yep. Hey ho! Welcome back. Hey there. Why, yes. Let me give you one of my old fashioned chocolate chip cookies. Enjoy. Bye bye. Jesus. Huh? Oh, you're back. She's pretty far gone. That's. Uh, I can uh, sympathize. Did his house get easier? Huh. Uh, I can sympathize with him. Why he's so grouchy. I can sympathize. Just fuck you for aiming it at me. Didn't recognize this bed. I think the bed's new. I knew you couldn't stay away. What? Thanks for setting me straight on everything. Your glowy eyes are throwing me off. Would you mind if I asked about your unusual hunger? I suppose not. When did you first discover it? I was about ten years old, and I was playing with Lucy down under the overpass. We loved throwing rocks in the water. We saw some wastelander trying to break open the Brahmin pens and steal one of them, so I ran over and told him to stop. He just laughed and pushed me away. When I fell, suddenly my head started to hurt, and my eyes got all blurry. It was almost like I blacked out. Next thing I know, Lucy was pulling me off the guy. I had ripped his throat open with my teeth. Hmm. Jesus. I remember hearing of... Hmm. Don't actually... No, I don't think I've heard that quite like that. Well, you'd hear in stories like multiple personalities, some one blacks out, the other takes over. Um, that, uh, that, that's the case here. Also, people disassociating from their anger. Got a feeling like they're just like watching their body do it, but again, not what's happening here. Uh, hmm. She said I, like, changed into another person, that I even glared at her and raised my arms like I was going to kill her. The Wastelander took a swing at me with some kind of club. I turned around and jumped on him. I tore his throat open with my teeth. If he wouldn't have done that, Lucy may have been killed, too. I just don't know. Did you ever talk to your parents about it? Lucy said Mom and Dad would never have understood. She told me to keep what I did a secret, and that she'd try and help me. Thanks to Lucy, she was able to stop that from ever happening again, for years. Every time I'd feel the hunger, she'd hold on to me and not let go. After a while, the hunger almost seemed to go away. Until, well... It's actually a common thing in stories. It's just like, the, like remember the evil within. There is the broader, the sister was the only one he cared for. Or, like the psychiatrist said, it was almost pedophilic, uh, not pedophilic, incestuous. If jumping through the other uh, sin, other bleh, thing. Um, but yeah, it was almost incestuous. I'm just like, I... <laughs> But, um, no, I just keep see seeing people talking about in uh, not incest, pedophilia, pedophilia, pedophilia online, and it's just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like we're back in the age of aristocrats. Or it's just like clones of Father O'Malley running around. Oh, actually, what time is it? Uh, it's 20 past one. It's all head ahead in a bit. But, um,. But yeah, uh, she was the only one he cared for. Probably so. Um, James, this guy's similar. wonder if... 
for hmm just I don't know just given its overlap with you know real life conditions apparently just I, mean, I know I'm just trying to think it out in my head sometimes different things in fiction just hit me like this and it's just like hey eh. most of the time I just like ignore it just on, but you know sometimes it grocks my interest I don't know. I really don't. I mean, I'm not totally dumb. I know they were in stories and all that. But who knows? Maybe Vance is right and vampires were just people like us who learned to control their hunger and drink only blood. I mean, vampires are regarded as feared monsters instead of hunted animals like cannibals. Kind of makes sense. I know it's painful, but let's talk about what happened in Arfu. It actually kind of makes me feel better to talk about it. Go ahead. Well, why did it happen? I wish I could answer that. I really do. I don't even remember it happening. When the hunger takes over, it's like being pushed aside. Like something else is controlling me. I can see what's happening, but can't close my eyes. I don't even remember exactly what happened until Vance knocked on the door. Jeez. This associating thing comes up. That's the weird thing. He has some sort of crazy sixth sense about or something. Maybe all of our kind do. As soon as I was with the family, I really felt at home for the first time in my life. It's like all these people are my real brothers and sisters. Hmm. I don't remember how long I sat there on the floor staring at my parents' bodies. It seemed like days I wanted to feed, to eat their flesh. But it was like a little bit of me was holding on. Then, out of nowhere, there was shouting outside and a knock at the door. I opened it, and it was Vance. He seemed to know exactly how I was feeling inside. He took me under his arm and we left. I never looked back. I sort of found his mark on the wall. What's up with that? Vance told me later that he was basically covering for me and allowing the family to... to feed at the same time. Since my parents were already dead, they drank their blood and left the mark on the wall. He didn't want Evan to suspect that I had done it. The irony is they were stalking our town to feed anyway. It's almost like Vance knew this would happen. Maybe in some ways that he did. Basically... Pressure and stress would flare his ailment. So he put the town under pressure and stress, come around hazing, harassing it, put, uh, killed the Brahmin, pushed them to break the kid to get a recruit. Like I said, he talks, talks and behaves like a cult leader, which is why I'm not a fan of letting them live, but I'm sure the game would decide, oh no, you're El Diablo for killing the Mook. Yeah, okay. It's weird living in my parents' old house with them gone, but I'll make the best of it. Everyone around here is being nice to me despite what happened, so I guess it all turned out well. Thanks. They're kind of weird, too. Sounds good. Come back and visit me sometime. Maybe I should kill everyone here. Hey ho! Welcome back to our cozy village. She's probably gonna fall off. Welcome back to Arafu, kid. So many different pronunciations, but that kind of makes sense. Everyone kind of mangles words. You know, I mangle sentences a lot. I hope I can just walk down here without getting molested by something. 
don't think Marlurks will spawn back in, but I just meant like a trap I missed or something. Actually, I might have played this game for 13 hours. I might have like left the pause, walked off, come back, and still counted that time. The best way for me to check would be via my uh, recordings. To actually count up the hours. I'm, I'm going to say it's probably marker glass. But yeah, the other our food people took took the agreement bit too well. Always a pleasure to receive you in Maresti. What brings you down here today? Uh, has accepted your proposal, Vance. Excellent. I knew you would serve as an ambassador for us in good faith. I will dispatch Alan to Arafu immediately to help serve as their guardian and honor my end of the agreement. Your efforts surpass those of the average human. In fact, I feel almost like you are a member of our flock. If you ever wish to learn our ways, you have but to ask. How are things going on? They're going now. Very well, actually. Our truce with Arafu is coming to fruition. I've begun teaching my people to live off of the donated blood packs. The transition has been difficult, but we will manage. You've certainly done us a great service, and I can't thank you enough. Teach me the ways of the vampire? To be a vampire is a life commitment. It is not achieved by my words. It is something you earn by your own will and sincere meditation. Sadly, I cannot fully make you one of us, but I can teach you how the lifeblood of others brings us regenerative powers. Since your body lacks the way to extract blood as we do, you must find alternative sources for your nourishment. Drink deep of the blood. Allow not a drop to spill. Feel the warmth as it spreads inside you. You are becoming one with the life force of another. They lend a part of themselves to you. For a brief moment, you are two entities becoming one. Allow the feelings to course through your body as you partake of the blood. Feel it empower you and make you stronger. Once you have done this deed, only then will you know what it is like to be a vampire. Advanced teaching grants you the ability to gain 20 hit points from consumption of blood packs. Hemophage. I'm certain. Uh, perks. Man to might. Been genetically enhanced. So I can now consume blood packs. Sadly, blood packs are an inferior way of healing. Uh. Come back to the. Scary vampire lair, have we? <laughs> um. They heal twenty. Uh. Okay, they only heal twelve. Chilled, they'll heal twenty. So for me, blood packs will heal as much as ice cold Nuka Cola. I'm not seeing the dude here. Did it was he the guy that got dispatched? Oh no, he, he's right the fuck here. Yeah, I was thinking his name was an Alan.
Hmm. I think I repaired a different gun and not this. Finally, we're out. Okay, so where got added? Fort Bannister. Rockbreaker's last gas, five axle rest stop, shale bridge. Ooh, Dickerson. Heh. <laughs> Tabernacle Chapel. Minefield. Yes, I do. Got rid of the other gun, the one that I had queued. We're nearly up to the minefield. We've done the first part of the damn guide then. I think it is overall worthwhile. It's just a pain in the fucking ass. Fuck hell. I don't know how the blood was staying on it there. The, those cars can still blow up? Didn't think that happened in this game. Wait. 
I think we have very little shotgun ammo. Jesus. That's annoying. Anyway, here's minefield at least. Gibson House. Yeah, unlike um, medkits, they t do have a weight value to them. And not medkits, stim packs. Not sure why they would have bottle caps in a safe. Obsessed collector, maybe. Thank you. Open model home. There's no way the med kits won't heal those limbs. I don't have a sniper rifle anymore. Did I give up on it? I didn't think I had. Can't talk this guy down if I get close enough, can I?
Hmm. Need to f figure out something to drop. Oh, I shouldn't be holding on to nine water. Uh, whiskey. The quantum doesn't get put into the fridge. Hmm. Oh, so you should drop off the little trucks as well. Jesus. Yes. Yes! Fast travel back. <sighs> hey there. All of us here thank you for everything you've done. For us, for the wastes. We pulled together and got you this. It's the best we could do. Please take it. With our thanks. Thank you. Certainly. It's the least I could do after all you've done. Nice. We go med kits now, but and every eye shall be blind with his glory. Oh, it's for credit side supply. Just looking for the other one. Those hot little potatoes. I got your minefield alive and I even brought you a present. My very own landmine! Oh, just what I've always wanted. Well, always since I sent you out on this anyway. Now, tell me all about it. What was it like going through there? What's it like disarming a landmine? Well, town's a trap. There's a sniper out there just waiting for me. Fast hands and faster wits can get you an awful lot, including landmines. <laughs> That's a pretty good way of putting it. I think I'll use that in the book. Maybe I should credit you as a co-author instead of just a researcher. I know you may not want to see any more explosives for a while, but obviously you know your way around them. Have a couple rainy day toys of mine. And looking at this landmine, it gives me an idea. It's a terrible device that does terrible things, of course. But it's easy to make your own, too. Does that finish the, uh, the first chapter? It most certainly does. And if I keep writing in the style of some of your reports, this is going to be one mighty slick book. Here, for your services, I've saved up quite a few stim packs. Of course, you may need them. We've still got two more chapters to go. Next chapter. The second chapter is going to be a bit trickier, I think. It'll cover how to handle creatures out there, for better or worse. For example, repelling mole rats, uh, learning about mire lurks, and when all else fails, how to handle being injured. So let's buckle down and get to work on this chapter. What's first? 
I'm gonna hate myself for this, but what do you mean ha about handling injury? Well, I never get to study anyone who's severely injured. Not without them crying to be fixed right away or trying to bleed out and all that. But obviously, you can handle a lot of abuse. So if I'm ever going to find a good example of human anatomy and injury resistance, it'd be you. Next time you get badly injured, return here so I can examine you before I heal you up. I mean, you're going to get yourself hurt anyway, right? What could possibly be worth breaking my bones over? Did you know when bones break and reheal, they grow back tougher? Apparently that's In a not way, true. You'd be repaying yourself. Once I make sure you survive, of course. But in a more tangible way, I can give you a modified environmental suit of mine. How's that sound? The voice jumbled a little there. Kind of talk over herself? Hmm. Wow, what a great research assistant you are. I mean, really, that's dedication. Demonstrating how to withstand pain by getting injured? Wow. When you're ready, Come back here with some serious injuries. Maybe a crippled limb or two. And I'll take notes and fix you up. I'll be waiting <sighs> here with plenty of bandages for you. So don't worry. Just go get horribly injured. Oh, and be careful. Remember, I'll buy whatever you're selling. Second. I can't put up with her voice anymore. Okay, I don't know what they're saying. To defeat me, you must kill me. No, to beat Doom, you must kill me, John Romero. Ah, oh, I can't remember. Oh. I've I've actually haven't healed it, apparently. I've actually already done it. I thought it said completed. Oh, maybe it was slow catching up. Hmm. Well, how do you feel? Do you want me to go out and hurt myself for your book? Oh, don't think of it as crippling yourself for me. Think of it as getting free treatment when you eventually end up getting yourself hurt. Yeah. Sure. Good hunting. Unless it
Hell yeah, baby. So much ammo. Okay, despite taking such hefty damage, I'm actually pretty grand. Like, out, out of figure two broken legs would mean I would move really slowly. I could move it all. You know, I think I've found a new way to prepare rad roach meat. Still tastes like old feet, though. Anyway, what's up with you? Let's talk about the serious injury. Well, how do you feel? This brute? Well, I'll study injuries on yourself. If it would help. I could. Mm, this really hurts, you know. Oh, I know it does, dear. But it's for a good cause. Uh, try not to squirm so much while I take notes. Now, how would you describe the pain you're feeling? Any advice for how to keep it from being overwhelming? And remember, this is for posterity. Uh, pain's an abstract thing. I stay focused on the findable things, like survival. That's a very enlightened attitude you've got. Shame it doesn't stop bullets, huh? Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now hold still, and quit fidgeting. Ugh, how can you be walking around like this? With great difficulty. Okay, I even stitched a little smiley face in you to keep up your spirits. It's kind of hard to see from your side, though. Here, take this environment suit of mine. It will help with medical tasks, and it should help prevent the effects of exposure, too. Mm. There's Next a bit. sort of mole rat repellent I've developed. I needed to be tested on a few mole rats before I can say it's a success. There's a lot we don't know about Mirelurks and how intelligent and dangerous they are. That definitely deserves research. And that should be it for the second chapter. Which do you want to check out? Mirelurks. Mirelurks are a big threat in some areas. And knowing more about them can help people learn to avoid or even outsmart them. So I picked up this observer device to study them in their natural habitat. I need you to hide one in one of the spawning pods in their lairs. That guy's taking one hell of a long drink. Sneak into a Marlar Claire. While you're working on that, I'll be following up on a lead I've got for a couple stealth boys. When you're done, they're yours. And who knows? Maybe we'll learn something useful from the Mirelurks. That's great. I recommend the nest at the Anchorage War Memorial. I knew a trader who talked about the Meyer Alerts down there. Just go inside and find one of their spawning pods, probably down near the water. Put this observer inside and get out quietly. And be sure not to kill any Meyer Alerts inside their nest. If you do, it could ruin the validity of the study. Nah. Yeah. Have fun. Jesus, I hate her guts. Um, huh? Yeah. I'm feeling good. Are you serious? Why? I'll be. Thank you, stranger. I can't tell you what this means to Megaton. my life can you you I, I can if you you save my life you I, I, you've helped me so much it, you I, I you save my life can you 
water. Oh. I'll never forget you. I hate to ask. I mean. You've helped me so much. You. I. I my. It's not like I need it. You saved my life. I mean. I pretty much just subsist off med kits. me so much. I mean. I my. Am I finally out yet? One more. You've helped me so much. It I mean. Required by law. Cheap way of getting karma, though I don't know how much it is. Urban Avenger. Very good. Looking for that special. Sun if the clothes make the man. Then here are the means to remake yourself. Hmm. <sighs> the way is annoying. Sell this. No, I will. A pleasure doing business with you. Walk well, friend. <sighs> Sold them the clothes off my back. I'm sure you'd appreciate it if I'd waited a moment. Pretty tired. I'm gonna call it here. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you jo uh, join me again soon. If you like to tell me, please let me know. But until then, love and peace.